Hello, my name is Li Qing Li. I'm the principal investigator of the Artisan and Developmental Disability Monitoring Network in Maryland. This project is funded by the US CDC to provide comparable population-based estimate of autism prevalence over time. The number is currently reported as 1 in 68 children. So what does autism awareness mean to me? It means whether you are one of the 68 or 67 of the 68, you are unique, special, and precious. My name is JJ Lee. I am Li Qin's niece. She was uh, one of the first people I met, except for my parents. She took care of me when my parents were busy for work and encouraged me to come to the United States for my education. I always follow her steps as far as I remember. She was not only my aunt, my best friend, and the inspiration of my life. She was the um, most generous and supportive person one would ever dream of. As a family, a friend, and a colleague, Li Qin treasured so much about the family and loved to organize parties, gatherings, and celebrations. She would take six to eight kids with age between six to 12 years old to public libraries. My cousins and siblings dream of visiting Li Qin with older kids for summer camps in where that's how we called it back then, in Kaohsiung, where um, Li Qin went to college. There were always negotiations and arguments among kids in who got to go for trips with her, even when Li Qin was in the US. She often remotely organized so many events for my family in Taiwan, she could come up tons of reasons to celebrate with, fam with family. Her kindness was beyond anyone could ever imagine. We all miss her so much and terribly every day. They were mornings that I woke up and wishes of losing her was a bad dream in the previous nights. Li Qing was the first in the family to pursue education, to go to college to come to the United States for higher education and career. She told stories about um, sneaking out of a family house to go to school, but got punished because of that. She worked multiple jobs in order to afford education at Hopkins. She dedicated her career to promote the awareness of and the research in children's mental health. The family has been extremely proud of her. Her vision and determination changes our lives forever, especially for the younger generations. I could think of hundreds of Li Qin's stories and share our memory of beloved aunts. Please join us to celebrate her life and continue her legacy. Thank you. Hello, I'm Amy Choi. I first met Li Qing when she came to interview for the doctoral program at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. We later reconnected as faculty colleagues at Hopkins. I'd like to share a trait that I think best captures Li Qing's spirit. To me, she personified determination, the quality of tenacity over life or persisting to exist. Li Qing was born as the fourth and youngest daughter of five siblings, born into significant impoverishment and with genu verum or bow legs. Her bone disorder was considered a bad omen, especially for females. This did not deter Li Qing in life, and she went on to forge a path as an exceptional, productive, and accomplished academic epidemiologist at the leading school of public health.
She had an act active network of collaborators and an outstanding record of sponsored research. She accomplished all of this on her own as a single Asian female, distanced from the embrace of family and the comforts of cultural touchstones. She assumed financial responsibility for her parents. Our tragedy was that she could not escape an illness that eventually overcame her and robbed her of many more years of life. Li Qing was loved by her friends all over. She never disclosed how much she was hurting, especially in her final months of life. She per pursued her autism research indefatigably through countless physician consultations, clinic visits, exhausting treatments, surgery, and from her hospital bed. She leaves a legacy of scientific insights into the prevalence and developmental conditions of autism, autism spectrum disorder among children. She also leaves behind a devoted niece, other family, friends, students, and colleagues, all bereft of her generous spirit, compassion, and love. May the memory of her world-class persona permeate hearts and minds as well as inspire more scientific understanding into child development conditions, including autism. Thank you. Li Qing was a fantastic colleague and great friend uh, to me personally, to the Wendy Clegg Center here at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, I had the privilege of co-teaching, really co-developing and then co-teaching an autism in public health course with Li Qing. She was really excited to put together such a course almost a decade ago when we decided that the Wendy Clegg Center should offer such a thing at the Bloomberg School. And um, she immediately had ideas for what kinds of topics should be in there and was eager to work with me to come up with our own lectures and lectures of others. Uh, we offered that course, I think, eight years in a row, both as a summer institute offering and as a full term course at the school. And she was constantly the fan favorite. Um, students loved her uh, because of her genuine care for them and her genuine care for people with autism and wanting everyone to understand the experiences of people with autism and how research can help. Um, we will sorely miss her at the Wendy Clegg Center and at the Bloomberg School and in the Department of Epidemiology and also in the Department of Mental Health uh, that I chair and that she was jointly appointed into. Um, I think you won't find a more genuine autism researcher who really cared about the people she worked for and also the people that she worked with. And we love you, Li Qing. Um, you will forever make an imprint on the work we do, the way we do it, and how much we care for each other. So in your memory and honor, thank you so much. Li Qing was incredibly tenacious and diligent. She loved her work, she loved her students, and she was incredibly dedicated to autism research. 
Hi, I'm Liz Stewart, Vice Dean for Education at the Bloomberg School of Public Health and a professor in the Department of Mental Health. I had the honor of working with Lee Ching through the Wendy Clagg Center for Autism and Developmental Disabilities. In thinking about this tribute, the immediate thing that came to mind was a word that described Lee Ching to me, and that's enthusiasm. Every interaction I had with her, she just had a spirit of enthusiasm for everything that she was doing whether it was a research project, student work, something in one of our personal lives, something related to the Wendy Clagg Center, she just brought a joy and enthusiasm that was infectious. I hope that we can all carry on that spirit of enthusiasm in her honor as we remember her today and moving forward. Hello everyone, I'm Sally. Li Ching Li Professor is my mother's aunt. And here's something I want to share about. We've had a great time in the U.S. because of you. You kindly let us stay at your house, and we went to lots of places. You made us feel better. When we need you, you're always there for us. We would like to say thank you for always being there. Thank you for being our hero. Hello, my name is Yu Chong. My little auntie Li Qin, she had the most brilliant and the most beautiful mind and the kindest heart. I am from Taiwan and I have never seen snow my whole life. The first winter in the U.S., my little auntie bought me the most soft, the most fluffy, and the mo and the warmest comforter to sleep. My little auntie loved organizing gatherings. She liked talking and laughing. Most of all, she liked sharing. She loved buying things for her family and friends. On the contrary, she rarely bought anything for herself. She invited the whole family to travel to the U.S. and almost paid for everything. She's the true angel from the heaven. Also, she is the true heroine of her life. She fought and fought and fought and finally rest in peace. I don't want her to leave, but I have to say goodbye to her. I will remember and treasure all of my memories with my little auntie. I learned so much from her and will fight to live in the U.S. just like what she did for, her, for the past 30 years. I love you, my little auntie. Now I am saying goodbye to you. We, we 